This morning readings from John chapter 18. Just the two verses, three verses, verses 28 to 30. Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is Brother Clive Simpson, speak life international ministry. As we journey through this book, chapter 18, as the Lord is being led to the cross, where the devil meant for heal of God will turn to our good. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 18, verse 20 to 30, and it reads, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here they are. The accusers of our Lord, to put it like that, accusing him of evil. We live in a world uh, today which there is this confusion where evil is being promoted and good is being downplayed. We live in a world nowadays where people are almost uh, totally confused as to what is good and what is evil. We're in a, a good person, awfully got a question, is put, is put in a position where it's almost there as if they got to question himself as to whether or not what they're doing is good or bad because of the way this world has become. The images that we see on television, the images that we see being promoted, everything that goes against what is, what is normally would have been the norm of decency has been downplayed in our society nowadays. So here we see where the Jews because of their culture and their religion they consider anyone that is not of their nationality and of them to be gentile which means that you are you are defiled you are unholy you are you are everything except you're barbarian i mean you name it you have been called a lower class once the, i don't know if a lot of people see this word called goya in places it's uh, we, we, have been, we have been termed the goyim or lower class. But anyway, in the scripture here, as you can see with them, they did not want to go into the praetorium. The praetorium, the, the, you know, in the, in the time of Israel, you have, it was the Romans. The Romans was ruling over them. The, they were, the Romans was the government. So here, as they were accusing our Lord, they had to take our Lord to Pilate. Pilate was the governor of, of Rome representing Rome over them so they have to take him to Pilate Pilate is in the Praetorium the place where he where he dwells it's like taking him to uh, Washington DC or here in in our state wherever the, the, the head of state is the governor so here here they were about to take him there but because of their nationality and who they are they consider themselves where if he if they were to go into this building this building where Pilate is, the governor is, who is not of their nationality, they would be going into a place that is unholy. Everything about him is unholy. And so they do not want to be defiled because if they go into this building, this building is going to mess them up so much that they're not going to be able to partake of what is called their regular feast, which is the Passover, which also represent Jesus Christ, the very one they're about to crucify. So this is the whole situation here. Where people, there's a lot of people who believe that by their descent, their family line, you know, if mama was holy and papa was holy, therefore automatically they become holy. So here and now the challenge is spiritually, spiritually is, is wherein holiness by works challenge holiness by faith. Because the Bible teaches us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Bible teaches also that we are saved by grace, by our faith in the Son of God, and not by works that any man should boast. The book of Isaiah teaches us that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags before a holy God. So if God does not make you holy, beloved, you are totally unholy. But these people live according to the law. They live according to the law. So now that grace, then truth has come, to reveal to them, to let them know that all of what you are doing is as filtered before a holy God. So now grace 
and faith is now put on the stand to be persecuted and to be executed because our Lord represent grace. He represent the love of God to us. He represent faith to us. So now the law, those who is of the law, is about to challenge faith and grace. Is about to be challenged and be crucified for our, on our behalf. We live in a world nowadays where in the church, Christianity all over the world are being challenged, being crucified, being 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 slaughtered. Many many years back, uh, we have this this big war in the Middle East, and the the big war that goes on in the Middle East was that a lot of Christians was being murdered. It's almost as if like there was a there was a, a sweep going on to wipe out totally wipe out Christianity in the Middle East. I know if a lot of people realize that martyrs. No one wants the truth. No one wants to hear the name of Jesus Christ because the name of Jesus Christ ignites and stir up the soul and the spirit of our humanity to make us take a good look at ourselves, to ask ourselves the question, are you living right before holy God? So here we see wherein they, the accusers of our Lord, thinking to themselves that they are holy, they are so holy that if they go into a building, the building going to defile them. Yet still, he who is holiness, they are about to be crucifying him. And why is this? Beloved, this morning, why is this? Because of spiritual ignorance, spiritual blindness. One of the dangers of life is to walk in pride and self-glory in such a way that you cannot see outside. You does not have a peripheral vision of what is truth, of what is wrong and what is right. The accusers of our Lord right here, they believe that by descent, by nationality, they are just simply holy. They are just simply holy because of their name. The Jews. But the Lord is coming to, to teach them a whole new thing to say, uh uh, whether your, nas your nationality by our descent or by your family line, none of that can save you. Everyone got to go through the same way, no matter who you are. So they are about to shift, they can shut him down. But what they're going to realize right here is that it's not going to help them. It's not going to help them. As we read here in verse 20, 28, then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. So first he was amongst them and their leaders, where they, were, where they come up with all this concoction as to how to get rid of him. But they need the final seal from those who they consider themselves unholy from, who rule over them. They need that final seal to seal the deal to say, yes, now we get the final seal, which has to come from the people who they call unholy, which is from Pilate, to finally crucify our Lord. So they have to go to Pilate because they are the government. The Romans was ruling over them. So they make they 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 come they put all this together, concocted how they're going to crucify him, how they're going to all the lies they 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 they, they bring witnesses. People who they probably trained as to how to lie against our Lord and then take him now to Pilate. So they said, so here in verse 10, then they led Jesus from Caiaphas, which is from their Senate, to the Praetorium, which is to the Roman Senate. And it was early in the morning, but they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled. But that they might, but that they might eat the Passover. They talk about a the confusion. They talk about a mess. Here you are accusing our Lord. Here you are plat and lying about God, and at the same time you consider yourself holy. And this is what they're about to do to our Lord. They lie against him, concocted stories against him to get him killed. Search your heart this morning. 
Are you accusing anyone this morning of something that you know they have not done? Search your heart this morning. Verse 29, Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? Verse 30, they answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. The judgment has been made. He's an evildoer. But the question is, what have we done? He's an evildoer. That was not the question. What have we done? Explain to us. Tell me, what have this man done? They are ready Put the seal on him. He is an evil door. So therefore, he must get rid of. Have you ever had anyone tag you? Have you ever had anyone just look at you and tell you, you are this, you are that, you are this. And, and you stand there because it's like they have so come to a conclusion about you. You have no say. Have you ever been in that position before? Have you ever done it? To anyone. Have it ever been done to you? What does it feel like? It amazes me with this. When I read this. That the king of glory. The Lord God almighty. Here. In humanity. Who could have called 10,000 of angels. Right here. And shut this down. It amazes me. How silent he was. Because what? What they do not realize is that they were just simply fulfilling prophecy. They were simply fulfilling prophecy. What they meant for evil. God is about to turn it for our good. To bring glory and honor. To his name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me this morning? Are you hearing me this morning? Beloved. Holiness is not by works. But it is by our faith. In the son of God. It is by grace. By what Christ Jesus. Has done. Or is about to do for us. As we journey through the scriptures. On that cross of Calvary. It is our belief that God came into the flesh, walked this earth, teach the teaching of the kingdom, suffered and died in Calvary's cross, rose on the third day with all power in his hand. It is this belief and confession of our faith that allow us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's presence that was in him has now been imparted to us. And it is the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives that fulfill the law in us so that we can walk in fulfillment of the law and in the perfection of his holiness by his grace, by his holiness and by his righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen? Amen. We have no righteousness of our own. If God is not doing it in us and is not doing it for us, if we are not yielding to the Holy Spirit, if we are not reading and studying God's word to know what God requires of us, so that when we take a look at our life through this mirror called the Bible, and to see where we were and where he has brought and how far he has brought us to and to where we are going. Beloved, if this is not the way and the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, then beloved, you are nowhere. This morning, I pray by the power of God upon your life that your holiness is not according to the law. Because if you fail one of the law, you fail all. You got to restart all over again. How many lifetimes do you think you have to do that? So God has made it very easy for me and you this morning through his son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of his Holy Spirit. God has made it simple that all you have to do this morning is study the scriptures and understand that God requires us to be holy as he is holy. And as you study the scripture and accept and ask of the Lord to be God and Lord of your life by the power of his Holy Spirit. And you submit to him daily through his word and spend time in the Holy Scriptures. Beloved, you will be saved. 
God will save you. God will begin to do a new work in your life because without holiness, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And God requires of us to be holy as he is holy. So this morning, beloved, walk by faith and not by sight. It is not by your work. God has already done it for you on the Holy Cross of Calvary. You have to study and know what is required from through his holy scriptures and submit daily and let him be Lord of your life. Let him cleanse you. Let him wash you. Let him sanctify you. Let him cover you. Let him guide you. Let him counsel you. Let him lead you. Once God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is doing that in your life, you become a, his tool and a vessel and an instrument by which the world will come to know him and have hope as much as you have hope. That if you should die this moment, you will be with him in glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be not an accuser this morning. Be not an accuser. But pray. And bless others. Because this is what we are called to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless the reading of his holy word this morning.